Hello, I am getting started. Do a little test here. Sounds good. Let me turn the volume up. Here we go. Okay, test mic, test mic, one, two. Good, mic is working. Okay. Let's see if I can get, okay. Got a lot of light coming in through the door. Okay, let's get some people on. Let's see, live on Facebook. Okay, I have two minutes before I'm live on Facebook. Okay, let's open the screen up some. pause hello this is you are in the right place this is realtor refresh and i am your host your moderator and today i am zooming from my living room full disclosure there may be some background noise i do apologize for that i did seek out shelter in a corner of the house, but there are plenty of us living here, so that was not quite possible, but I could not hold back from providing some realtor refresh. For those of you who may be in the real estate industry or those who are just in business that are tired of being bogged down by whatever, whatever it is, whether it's work, whether it's home, whether it's whatever the things, all the things. So I decided to do this realtor refresh on the heels of the 31 day wisdom challenge. If you've been following my posts, you see that I've been on the 31 day wisdom challenge with 100X crew and Pedro Adeo. And at, that has really helped give me some refreshment. Um, just help me to gather wisdom and to learn more about life, some principles, some strategies to help not only, I hope I'm not making too much, making too much distraction. I just heard a little muffle, but these, this particular challenge that I'm doing has to do with realtor refresh. And the reason I chose to do it is because I need refreshing and I thought you might too. And so the refreshing I'm talking about comes from an internal refreshing. Full disclosure, I may or may not have the C word. Uh, it has traveled through my house and all of us have been affected, which is why I've been staying at home. So um, that is why I decided to do this because it, working from home, you, you really do need uh, refreshing, <laughs> right? So I put a post on with one of my grandsons, actually both of them, and asked them the question, what is ownership? And so that's a question I have for you. What is ownership? Now, when I think about the word ownership, I think of Lord, which in the Bible, it talks about lords, kings, talks about the king of kings, but the particular ownership that I want to dive deep into is one of the pillar principles of the kingdom. As it pertains to real estate, many people get into this business as a realtor. And yes, we do as realtors have a code of ethics to adhere to. Not only do we have a code of ethics to adhere to, we have rules, we have regulations, we have laws, we have all of the things that we must comply with. But then there's a standard of practice that goes beyond the code of conduct, if you will, a, a standard of practice that goes beyond what's in the textbook. And I call that a moral compass. And so when I think of ownership, I think of something that you love, that you take care of, that you take pride in, that you consider it's all yours. You know, no one else 
no one else can touch it. And I looked up some definitions of ownership and really the word own has an origin that goes back to the 1600s. And it talks about own as a, a propriety or a possess, to possess. So to own is to possess, right? To have. And then the word ship sounds pretty self-explanatory, right? Ship, ship is a vessel and that actually has an old origin that goes back to a romantic relationship. Wow, romantic relationship. So when you put possess and romance, hmm, not quite sure what that sounds like. I think I know what that sounds like, but that's ownership. That's ownership. I don't know where your mind's going, but just want to say that's ownership. So I'd like to just take you down a path of a journey that I've went on. And what I'd like to do is explain to you what I'm going to do in these next couple of days before I start getting too far away. So each day, this is a three-day journey that I hope you stay on with me. It's a three-day journey. And the first day, it's all about ownership. Day two tomorrow is about stewardship. And I will have a special guest on tomorrow to talk about stewardship in relationship to the kingdom principles. And then day three, I also have a special guest. We will be talking about generosity. Those three principles are the pillars of our real estate business. Really, if you think about it, we transact with owners, we deal with ownership, we deal with stewardship, and we deal with generosity. So we're going to do a deeper dive into those other two. But today, we're going to talk about ownership. Now, if you take the time to look at some of the videos, my grandsons went online and they talked about what they thought ownership was. Well, one of them did. The other one kind of played around. And I had a little challenge using my laptop to Zoom. So today, later today, I'll get the other grandson on and let him say what his idea of ownership, what his idea of ownership is. Now, there's a story in the ancient book of wisdom, which I'd like to share with you. And it's a story. And the story has to do with ownership. Now, this is a story you may or may not have heard before, but it lays the foundation of the principles that I want to share with you today. And it's coming out of the book of Mark. I actually can do a shared screen so we could see it on screen together. Let's see, shared screen. Okay, share. I have my whole screen up here. Okay, here we go. The scripture. So I want to share with you the parable of the tenants. Now that's an interesting uh, story about the parable of the tenants because it encapsulates all of the nuggets that I want to share with you today. So I'm going to read it and then maybe take a pause to talk about what ownership means in this story or what my takeaways are uh, regarding ownership. So let's get it lined up. For those of you who aren't familiar, this is the Passion Translation. There's various translations, and I am a believer. So if you're not a believer, that's okay. I'm taking you on a historical journey, okay? Think about it like that. This is a historical journey <clears throat> in which I'm sharing a story that Jesus, because when Jesus spoke, he spoke in parables because a lot of people didn't quite understand the stories, or he wanted to be a little mysterious. And for the people who really sought out the truth, they could um, seek it out and find what the answer was. Okay. It's almost, it's not a riddle, but it's I'm getting feedback on my headset. Hopefully I'm Hopefully I am still here. I okay, can I'm going to pull my headset away. 
can you go in the chat, uh, Karen, and tell me if I'm still clear? Okay, I'm not dubbing myself. Okay. I'll continue. This is weird because my headset is speaking after me, and it's probably because I'm on Facebook Live as well, and that's that's what it is. Okay. Okay, so I will, let me look at the chat really quickly. There we go. Okay. I can hear a difference. Okay. Sound is good. All right. Thank you. Okay, so now I'll go over the story of the parable of the tenants. Let me move my move my little face around down here out of the way here we go the parable of the tennis this is the the passion translation there's various translations but i wanted to share this one with you because it uh, is more practical language than the, some of the other translations then jesus began to speak let me stop i didn't give the backdrop the backdrop to this story is the verse prior, where a lot of people are questioning Jesus. A lot of the Sadducees, Pharisees, the hip, I was going to call them the hypocrites, but a lot of the religious people were questioning Jesus. Why this? Why that? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? So that's the backdrop to the story. So here we go. So Jesus responds with this story, which is the parable. Then Jesus began to speak to them in parables. There once was a man who planted a vineyard and put a secure fence around it. He dug a pit for its wine press and erected a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenant farmers and traveled abroad. So pause right there. That's ownership. He had a vineyard. Now, vineyard, that's wealthy. And he put a fence around it to contain it and secure it. Verse 2, when the time of harvest came, he sent one of his servants to the tenants to collect the landlord's share of the harvest. Okay, note the word landlord. So I talked in the beginning that ownership is like Lord. This ties into that land owners, landlord. Okay, picking up on verse three. But the tenants seized him and beat him and sent him back empty handed. So let me back that up again. When the harvest time came, he sent one of his servants. So apparently he was wealthy enough to have people working for him. Like when you're in business, you can't always do everything. You have people working for you uh, to the tenants to collect the land owner's share of the harvest. So we know this, this person's an owner. We know he has servants. We know he has wealth right? He has people working for him to do what he needs done. Okay, I'll go back to verse three, but the tenants, the people that are renting from the owner, the tenants seized him and beat him and sent him back empty handed. Wow. Sounds like when you try to collect rent and the tenants turn on you. Well, they don't turn on you. They turn on the people that you send to collect the rent. Who's familiar with that? So the owner sent another servant to them. Hmm. The owner sent another servant to them. And that one, they shamefully humiliated and beat over the head. Wow. Not only did they send him away, they humiliated him and beat him over the head. So he sent, he being the landowner, sent another servant, and they brutally killed him. Okay, these people are vicious. They're out for blood. Many more servants were sent. Many more servants. So this, this landowner has a lot of wealth because he's sending many more servants 
Could you imagine being that servant who goes after you find out the person before you was killed? That's a, I don't know if that's job security or not, but the owner has the funds to pay his servants well. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. I mean, I don't think I would go to a job if I were a servant that I knew somebody before me was killed. Just saying. I think that's, excuse me, that's, that's tough. Okay, shamefully and humiliated, beat him over the head. So he sent another servant and they brutally killed him. Many more servants were sent and they were all severely beaten or killed. So not just one, not just two, but several were beaten and or killed. Okay, verse six, the owner had only one left to send his only son, whom he dearly loved. So he sent him to them, saying, surely they'll restrain themselves and respect my son. But the tenant saw their chance and said to one another, this is their heir. Come, let's kill him. Then we'll inherit it all. Stop right there. So the tenants who are supposed to be paying, and in this case, it wasn't rent in the sense of money, it was a portion of the fruits of the vineyard, because they're renting it to cultivate the land to give the owner back what's due the owner, because they get to stay there, right? So that was the exchange. But these tenants had it in their mind that not only did they want to stay on the property, they became more than squatters. I think, yeah, I think squatters is a term I would use. They became more than squatters. They became murderers. And now they are thieves because they are wanting to steal the inheritance of the owner. So pick it up on verse eight. So they violently seized him. Now, this is the owner's only son. They seized him. Let's see, go back. So they violently seized him, killed him, and threw his body over the fence. Now, that's some rough, rough, rough. Then verse 9. So what do you think the owner of the vineyard will do? He will come and put to death those tenants and give his vineyard to others. Okay, so the owner is going to get justice because it says, so they violently killed and seized him, his only son, and threw him over the fence. And so what do you think the owner of the vineyard will do? That's pretty much a question mark. What do you think the owner would do? Well, I would think the owner would want justice. Just saying, he will come and put to death those tenants and give his vineyard to others. Verse 10, haven't you read what the psalmist said? The stone the builders examined and rejected has become the cornerstone. The most important stone of all. And in this case, it's talking about Jesus is the stone. And so one of my grandsons says what he thinks about ownership is God. And so just saying a kid who hadn't been programmed to say anything knows internally that somebody else owns all these vessels. You know, there's an owner out there for these vessels. Remember I said ship is vessel. Okay, verse 11, this was the Lord's plan, and he, remember I said Lord is own, this was the Lord's plan, and he is wonderful for our eyes to behold. Now, the chief priests, religious scholars, and leaders realized that Jesus' parable was aimed at them. Remember at the beginning, I said all these scholars and religious leaders were 
basically asking Jesus all these questions and he's giving them this parable. So they had hoped to arrest him there, but they feared the reaction of the crowd. So they left him alone and went away. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing. And just take a reflection on that. So that story came out of Mark 12. And I think that's a beautiful picture of what ownership is. Because in business, we own properties, we sell properties, we manage properties, but there's also an owner involved. In this particular case, Jesus has given us a parable about what ownership is like. And sometimes it's rough. Sometimes people are out to get you, <laughs> literally out to get you. And so I think the big takeaway for me in this is that the owner is not poor. The owner is not pinching pennies to see, okay, when am I gonna get my next sale? The owner has servants, plural. The owner has several people working for him. He's got enough, he or she has enough to hire more and more. And when those get turned away and turned away, this owner results to a family member, right? Because it's a parable. It's like an analogy of Jesus, the father God and the son Jesus. It's like that analogy. But think about yourself. You know, if you are an owner of this vineyard and you've rented it out you've leased it out in today's terms we lease out property and we receive tangible income back so in that story this owner this wealthy owner has enough money must have money enough wealth to pay for a fence a full barricade around the vineyard around the vineyard has money for the vineyard money for the fence money for the servants and then he's not receiving he or she's not receiving the income from that vineyard but still is able to keep business going right to the tune of sacrificing themselves so the questions that I have for you is, where do you find yourself in this trilogy in Mark 12? Where do you find yourself? Hopefully you're not on the end of the tenants. Doesn't mean you are a tenant, but from the perspective of the story, uh, on, the end, on the perspective of the story, the tenant was greedy. The tenant wanted the wealth of the owner but the owner's wealth couldn't be tapped and so i'd say lean into ownership ownership is the foundational principle which will accelerate your business and so using that mindset of ownership i own my business i transact with people to own their business not own their business, but I transact with people. I knew this was going to happen. I'm on the Zoom, baby. I transact with people to. Can you can you go back, baby? Can you go, can you go back? No, no, no. I'm on the Zoom. Okay. 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 That's okay. Thank you. I was going to ask you what's what's ownership, but what's ownership, Eli? What's ownership, Eli? What would you say ownership was if you had to guess? You guess is saving stuff. Okay. That's ownership. Thank you. Okay. So I knew this was going to happen, which is typical ownership is saving stuff and people ownership is saving stuff and people mm -hmm. okay thank you that's quite insightful i i receive that ownership is saving stuff and 
people. And so in ownership, we do save, right? And we do serve people. So I'd say as, as a kind of a finale, because I don't want to keep you on for the whole hour. Um, I want to give you some homework, but I want to share some more tools that I received in like you're not going to give me a break are right. you yes can you let me can you let me finish please but I, need you to cook me something. I will in just a minute okay. Not, not, not. okay so this uh, particular day is our foundational day of ownership three pillars are ownership stewardship and generosity I hope you will go back and reflect on Mark 12 and then go online, introduce yourself to the group, let us know who you are, what line of work you're in. Everyone's not in real estate that's joined this group, which is okay. So share who you are, what line of work you're in, and what you're hoping to get out of this challenge. My desire is to give you a glimpse of being refreshed. Now, refreshing may sound like it's something outwardly, but I'm speaking more inwardly. Ownership, stewardship, and what else? Generosity. Generosity is the third one. So there's three pillars. And so tomorrow you'll hear from, I have a guest um, speaker. Just a minute, baby. I, just a minute. I have a guest speaker who will uh, come in and talk about, thank you, Sweepy. I have a guest speaker who will come in and speak more about stewardship and maybe even use this same story. So I would say take a deep dive into Mark 12 because that opens up a lot of doors to perspectives on ownership and perspectives on wealth right? Perspectives on, okay, if you're an owner, does that mean that you're barely getting by? Does that mean you have more than enough? Does that mean you have just enough? I mean, there's schools of thought on that. But I just wanted to share with you is that this is your opportunity to be refreshed. So think of yourself as an owner, whether you own property or not, whether you desire to own property or not. I hope you do, because when I looked more into ownership, it talks about dominion and territory, right? There's so many stories about taking dominion and territory, right? So in my neighborhood, I happened to drive around this neighborhood before I moved here, and I saw this lot, and I saw all these beautiful houses and thought, okay, I can't live there. Well, that was a self-defeating thought. But then I thought, well, why can't I live there, right? <laughs> why can't I live there, right? So I happened to be a realtor. So I called the number and found out they were carrying contracts. So long story short, I was able to buy the lot that we now purchased and built our home later. But had I been thinking like an owner, I would have thought like the one, the neighbor across the street from me and purchased the lots next to me and had more property, right, to transact because property values have, have gone up probably nationwide. So thinking like an owner, sorry, thinking like an owner means you want to acquire territory right? And you may want to facilitate others in acquiring territory or owning property. So ownership is really the foundation to these three pillars, which I say are kingdom principles for real estate. And they could also be kingdom principles for whatever industry you're in is ownership. So whether you're selling contracts or whether you're not even in sales, but uh, something to where there is something that's being transacted, a service, a product, whatever that is. Think of it in terms of ownership. And when you think of it in terms of ownership, that will uh, permeate throughout your business. 
I'm a believer that what you focus on, you bring attention to. I'm at home right now. I'm caring for my mom who's really having a, a struggle with this uh, COVID, but I'm, I'm sure she's going to come out victorious because I just decided we're going to think positive about healing and health. Sure, we're going to take the necessary precautions with all the medicines and all the vitamins and supplements and eating real healthy food to help strengthen the body because the body has a way of healing itself, believe it or not. Body has a way of healing itself. And I happen to have a nice juicy orange, which once we're done, I'm going to consume that one. <laughs> just, just a little side note. So ownership, think about ownership as you lay out being refreshed. Think about what do I own? What can I own? Am I thinking like an owner or am I thinking like a tenant? Am I thinking that uh, I want to take what the owner has because I have this poverty mindset, I want to take it away? Or am I thinking abundantly like the owner is? The owner's got all these stewards. He's just sending them left and right. They're getting beat up. They're getting clobbered. I mean, there's another person in the story, right? There's the servants, poor servants. They're getting beat up, getting killed. I mean, I don't want to be any of those characters in the story. I want to be the owner. And I'm hoping you want to be the owner because the owner is, the owner has it all, right? The owner has it all. And not only that, the owner knows the source of where he gets it from, right? Some people look at these principles and think, okay, I'm not, I don't believe in God. I'm not religious. I, you know, I don't really go for that. But this, the principles of ownership play out whether you believe or not. Those kingdom principles play out in business. If you think about it, some of the wealthiest people are owners. They own real estate. They own property. Some of them own islands. I mean, ownership is huge. It is the foundational principle to real estate is ownership. If you look at the code of ethics for realtors and you look at the preamble, what does it say? And for those of you who don't know, it talks about all the land. I, I can't, I don't know it by heart. I probably should pull it up for you. Let me see. I probably should have pulled it up for you. Sorry for putting that up on the screen. But um, all ye, what is it? All ye land. It's almost sounding like a King James version of the Bible. So, but it's talking about all ye the land, you know, landowners and steward. You know, it's basically talking about ownership, ownership. So you can't escape ownership if you're in real estate. If you're in this industry, and even if you're not, if you're in business, you cannot escape ownership. Ownership is the foundation to building your business. Not only is it the foundation, but it is the accelerant, if you will, accelerant to growth. So think about when you purchase something is this thing called the ventricular reticular activator. Am I saying that right? Somebody in the chat, if I'm wrong, uh, reticular activator. I think that's what it's called. But when you buy something, you happen to notice everybody else is buying the same thing. When I bought my car, I just noticed everybody else had the same car. When I bought my house, I noticed my neighbor copying some of the things, some of the features of my house. I mean, I don't know. People want things that you have. Maybe, I don't know. But I think it's just you notice it. I think you notice it. And so when you become a homeowner and you help people become homeowners, it becomes contagious. And so part of that is speaking it out, believing it up here that it's possible, not thinking of yourself as a tenant, not thinking of yourself as a, a servant, you know, passing, um, 
passing yourself, uh, not passing yourself. I was about to say passing yourself around, not passing. No, 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 no. Didn't mean that. Uh, don't think of yourself as a servant either. So there's three dichotomies in that story. There's the owner, there's the tenant, and there's the servant. I think in that story, I forget sometimes about the servant, you know, but I don't want to be a servant outside of the fact that I want to serve people. And I don't consider that being a servant, but maybe it is. Maybe that's a, a shift in, in my mindset about servitude. But those servants were willing to risk their lives. And so in some aspect, servants are part of what owners do. They serve. They serve their people. And so this owner may have seemed like he led his sheep to slaughter, so to speak, but he was serving his people because at the end of the story, he talks about giving, and that's the generosity piece we'll talk about on day three, but he talked about giving it to another, not renting it, not leasing it, but he said giving it to another. So those foundational principles cannot be escaped in real estate. I'm debating whether to continue to go on now that my interrupter is gone, but I have a feeling my interrupter may come back. So I am going to just leave you with some homework. How's that? Let me see if I missed anything. I want to leave you with some homework. I said I want you to go live and say who you are and what you're hoping to get out of this refresh. And maybe go ahead and share any insights that you might have on that story in Mark 12. I'd like to hear those insights on what you got out of that story. Okay, so I've covered pretty much everything I wanted to cover even though I've had some interrupt, interrupt us and um, my voice is starting to wane. So I wanted to make sure I at least came on for day one of the Realtor Refresh uh, Challenge. I didn't use the word challenge, but it, this is a challenge. And in case I didn't explain because I'm so quick to just dive into the material, a challenge is an online um, framework to share a message. And that's what I'm doing. I'm sharing a message, message, a product or service. So, and the service that um, is here is uh, basically just, it's, this is free. So not, you know, not looking to get you guys to pay for anything. But at the end of this, you will get an opportunity to get this, to buy into this page, this group for lifetime access. And I, and it's a very, very low, what, $8 just to, just to be refreshed. And I pledge, right, commit to coming on on a regular basis just to provide some refreshing material, right? It may not be from Mark, it may be from some life application of something that is refreshing. Because the Bible does say if you refresh others, you will be refreshed. So that's my um, motive behind this because motives do matter, right? At least that's what one of my mentors says, motives matter. So make sure you tune in for day two and day three. Day two, again, is about stewardship and day three is about generosity. And so maybe my, my guests might dive deep, a little deep into that, because um, I really want that to resonate with you and for you to hear that message in the story and how that resonates with you. Where do you see yourself in that story? Because these parables are stories of life's applications, right? How people really treat each other. We do have people that want to take over property and we call them squatters, right? We do have people that um, go after 
vulnerable people who own property to try to steal their inheritance. Those things happen. So that's not a book of fiction. It's a book of, of reality. It's the word. And so I, I hope you hear that and I hope it resonates with you and I hope it refreshes you. And so tomorrow we will spend a little more time. I'll see if I can find a, a space where I can dedicate some attention to my guests because I certainly want to do that. But then again, I'm not sure if my guests will I'll refresh. I'm not sure if my guests will be able to stay for the full hour. Um, so I'm glad to hear some of you are refreshed. That is refreshing to hear. Okay. And so I wish you the best in health, in business, and in life. As um, I sign off, I just again want to remind you tomorrow is stewardship. And my guest, I guess I'll go ahead and tell you, my guest is Deborah McElroy. She is coming from the East Coast, and she's also a realtor. She's going to be sharing uh, with you about stewardship. And we're just kind of going to go back and forth on the meanings of stewardship and how that's impacted us as realtors in this industry, because that's another pillar. And these pillars kind of uh, stack on one another. And so now that you've got the foundation of ownership, I want you to think like an owner. So whether you're a tenant, whether you're a servant, meaning you work for someone, you're a W-2, whether you're either of those, a tenant or a W-2 employee, think of yourself as an owner because it's not what is on paper, it's what's in your head. It's not what's on the ground, it's what's in your head, right? Because we are physical beings, right? But, well, what is, let me say this right. We are physical beings, we have a body, right? But we're spiritual beings too, right? We have a soul, we have emotions, we have a mind, right? And so let's use that mind to think like an owner because what you focus on, you'll bring attention to. So focus on ownership as your kingdom principle pillar for real estate, ownership, remember it. I can't say it enough, ownership. You are an owner, you are an owner. All right, let's see before I log out. Awesome, 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 okay. All right, well, I am refreshed because you are refreshed and I look forward to going back, putting in maybe some little quizzes, some little fun things, because I like to do fun things to keep things uh, lively. But don't forget to go live today on the group, in the group, and share. Share. That's important. I've heard favors on your face. So if they can't see your face, then, you know, it's kind of hard to shine that favor on you because it's contagious, right? It's contagious. So thank you for coming and I will see you tomorrow.